Hello, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I'm here with the molar crown preparation segment. Uh, this video is going to inc uh, incorporate the entire uh, tooth preparation and uh, to start things off what we're going to do is uh, take a look at our molar as it appears in the typodont. So as um, I discussed in the class what we want to do first is is draw a line that is uh, right at the gingival line and you want it to go all the way around the tooth so do take your pencil and just mark that because our our finally our margin is going to be just about at the crest of the tissue we don't want it to go below so that we can record it so you'll be re referring and uh, back and forth for this procedure so again first things first and let me hold my tooth is actually with the screw out so I'm going to hold mine in place and go ahead and just draw that line make sure it's above the gum line and you might have to redraw this because it is um, it's pencil uh, pencil will wear off okay so now we can move on we'll take our tooth with the lines that are drawn and then we'll just go ahead and and connect that now it's not that difficult to connect it is more of a round area in the interproximal area so it doesn't go straight across it continues with the contour so if you notice we're here on the facial and the or excuse me the buccal and the lingual aspect of the tooth uh, all the way down to the gum line and then you have this this area the interproximal area that actually goes up and down kind of like a uh, a roller coaster okay and that's because there's soft tissue called the papilla that's located in between teeth so you want to stay above that. There are instance, instances where we're closing uh, spaces in the mouth and in those cases I have to actually um, go below the gum line. But for today we're, we'll do it this way. Now I'm going to start off with placing the burr and the collet. This collet is the uh, smaller collet <coughs> and um, the collet size uh, definitely um, designates the size of the burr and vice versa. So if we're looking at the various collets, this one is um, going to be the one that we're going to use for the high speed diamond burr. This one is used for the lower speed uh, carbides. All right, And I think there's one more in your kit and that's to be used with uh, your polishing um, agents. All right, so let's put these aside. <coughs> now, there's a cover screw. We have to undo this. Put your collet in place all the way. And then we're going to hand tighten this just a little bit. Don't forget, you got to push this button. And by the way, um, at about 30 hours you're going to have to lubricate the shaft and there's some instruction um, in the handout about that so don't forget you know about 30 hours you'll have to lubricate the shaft and uh, I believe it's with motor oil and a rag um, I do not have that part of the video I didn't incorporate it part of the video but um, you can uh, when you look that up uh, you can call me if you want uh, instruction on how to do that or I'll do a demonstration and class about that. So back to here. Now we want to go ahead and get our burr and that's going to be the round and tapered diamond. It's a coarse diamond. We'll slide that in. Again holding this button down, slide it in. I like to go to right about the green stripe. That's good for me. And and I really like to snug that up. Don't over tighten because that will ruin your collet. So just a little quick turn you know, maybe one sixteenth to the right. Very, very, just enough to tighten it a little bit. I use the phrase, snug it up. Okay, now, um, we've showed you in the previous video on how to play, how to put this all together. Now we're gonna go ahead and use it. I'm gonna go to my drill, my motor, and I'm gonna turn it on to four. All right, and a little discussion before we start. Some things to point out. Number one, 
our goal is to use enough depth cuts in here, follow the grooves so that we get enough reduction. The burr end itself is rounded. It also has a taperedness to it. We want to try to make things uh, near, uh, as far as reduction, right about two millimeters uh, at the most. Our goal is 1.5 millimeters, uh, which is almost the diameter of the middle portion of the burr itself. The, right at the end, uh, we're going to be close to about a millimeter and a quarter. Um, and uh, the margin itself of the crown is going to be about half that that uh, diameter. So I'm going to start off, I'll prep half of this tooth and then I'll prep the rest of it to show you exactly um, uh, uh, the dimensions that we're looking for. So first thing is going to be is occlusal reduction. We'll do depth cuts in all the major grooves and they're all going to be on an angle. I'll go ahead and start that now. Now I'm using uh, again low power of a 4 and um, my um, one rec recommendation is if you can put your fingers together like this and hold this so that you're bracing whether you're going to use a pencil grip which is this grip here or you're going to use a palm thumb grip where your palm and your thumb and you're grabbing onto the the motor unit itself. I'm going to try to demonstrate it with both. I'll probably use both types of grips and so we'll get started. So I'm going to go along the lingual groove first and to make things a little easier, I'm going to use a suction. Um, I know you're going to use basically an air gun or a toothbrush to wipe things. Um, I'm going to use suction so that everything is going to move along fairly quickly for you. So let's move over toward our suction. There it is. And I'm going to use the microscope to do this. Let's see if we can move things over a little bit. There we go. All right. Okay, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm prepping, I'm going to zoom in on this, I'm going to be prepping the, the lingual. So I'm going to use the toe of the diamond and go in. And I'm going to try to stay uniform with the trough. I know it's a tapered diamond, so I don't want to I really don't want to um, to make one end deeper than the other. We want to stay uniform in our reduction of uh, 1.5 millimeters in depth. So pretty much you're going to bury the end or the tip of the burr, or I call it the toe. All right, and that would be your first depth cut. And you may want to come in just a little bit more toward the buckle. Because imagine there's a straight line here and you want all your tips to kind of line up with each other. So that's your first cup. Now I'm going to go to the mesial buckle groove. I just turned it around. And drop another depth cut in here. And I'm pushing not too hard. I'm just letting the burr do the work. All right. And of course, I already lost most of my pencil markings, but that's that's okay. We'll recheck it later. So we're going to do the occlusal portion first. All right. So that's pretty good for me. I like that. I'm going to do another cut. Okay, that one's done.
I'll zoom in a little closer here. So now we're just eliminating some of this middle portion here, just a little. We're going to come back to that and I'll show you how we smooth that up. Okay. So there are your three cuts already. And now basically what we want to do is uh, extend another cut here. This is on the mesial aspect. And I can drop that down as well. Now uh, someone asked me, you know, can we stay with the anatomy of the tooth? Are we going to do a uniform reduction? You can. Um, I'm not going to make it a requirement at this point, but you can do that. All right, and then just keep up with your your depth cuts at this point because that's going to give you a uniform reduction. Uh, similarly when we were doing the class 1 class 2 restorations you know you did depth cuts vertical depth cuts. These are now more horizontal. But you notice one thing we're all tipped in toward this V shape and um, we do want to be the depth of the tip of the burr. So if I were going straight down versus in on an angle, you'd have more of reduction at the cusp height and you don't want that. You don't want to take too much off. You do want to keep the contours and uh, I'll go ahead and do a reduction here. Anterior teeth are a little more different uh, the posterior um, with the respect that they're more of a flat surface, uh, more vertical flat surface. Okay, so there's my, uh, for counting, one, two, three, four, five, six depth cut. And you might be able to do one more on this side. So again, the toe of the burr. And I'm just checking overall reduction side to side. Now notice I'm not using the tooth clamp. You can definitely use the tooth clamp uh, and it's not that difficult. It does assist with uh, holding the tooth. Um, I'm used to doing this so many times uh, for demos that um, I'm pretty strong with my fingers but if you're not use the tooth clamp. It comes with your kit. Okay. So now we've got this uh, tooth now that's depth cut and uh, I'm going to do one side first. I'll show you how I do that but um, to remove the occlusal before we do the vertical portion of the reduction. I'll start to just reduce now in a lateral motion connecting the dots. All right. Now the temptation is to run it at a higher speed. I really feel that that will be too much power for you and you could even burn the plastic at a higher speed so you don't want to do that. All right. And you see how I'm doing this. Controlled. Nicely done. I'm going to flip it around now. This is the distal aspect, so now I'm doing the distal marginal ridge. I, nothing says you can't turn it on its side and do it this way, but in the mouth, you know, that, that's impossible. So And just pull it. Just be careful. Don't have your finger in the way. Okay, so that's reduced. Now I'm going to reduce this part of this cusp tip. And again, I'm just using the side of the burr.
Okay, we'll bring that down just a little bit more. And then when you're done, we're going to be actually checking this with a special gauge, a thickness gauge. Okay. So it's starting to materialize. I'd like to get a little more uniformity in this middle portion here where the central groove. So I'm just using the toe and I'm kind of smoothing the toe. So we get a nice V shape to our prep. So bring this out a little bit more. You want an even, you want your goal to be an even thickness. So proportion is important. All right, so that's the occlusal reduction. And you can see that portion. So we can continue now, I'll just take down the next. All right. You get the idea. And when you're finished, you'll have almost a mirror shape of one side to the other. All right, so I'm going to continue but and pick this up on the next segment with the full occlusal reduction, and then I'll remark the margins, and I'll show you how we drop the vertical um, depth cuts. All right, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I'll catch you on the next segment. Take care.